Hello and welcome. I'm from COST and I'll be your guide through this instructional video. This video is an introduction to the construction of a COST Biosand filter mold. It is being provided free of charge. We hope you find it useful. COST is the Centre for Affordable Water and Sanitation Technology a not-for-profit organization based in Calgary, Canada. COST provides education, training and expertise in water and sanitation to developing countries through hands-on workshops and related materials like this video. Biosand filter uses simple technologies and materials available locally in most parts of the world. It is used to remove contaminants from water, such as bacteria. Biosand filters are meant for household water use and can clean up to 100 litres of water per day. For more information on the Biosand filter, look around on the COST website or contact COST directly. This video will demonstrate how to build a mold for the Biosand filter. Once you have learned how to build a mold, you can start producing Biosand filters to help clean the water in your community. First of all, download a copy of the Biosand filter mold design manual from the COST website. You can follow along in the manual as we go through the video together. The mold is made of sheets of steel which are welded together. The components of the Biosand filter are the back panel, the side panels, the front panel, the interior mold, the nose, the cover plate, and the extractor. This video will demonstrate how to put together each of these components in turn. Before we get going, there are a few tips that we have for you. The first time you have a mold made, book one week of time to work directly with the welder or check in periodically to make sure they understand the instructions. Don't expect to simply drop off the plans and come back to pick up a finished mold. Explain to your welder what the mold is for and what the most critical parts are. If the welder doesn't know what the part does, they won't understand what's necessary to make it work. It's always a good idea to show them pictures from the manual or this video. For reference, a Biosand filter mold is much like a brick maker mold. Set up a contract with your welder. It should state that you must have a working mold which has been tested and produces a working concrete filter before you will pay in full. We recommend that you always make safety your highest concern when building a Biosand filter mold. Make sure you know how to use all of the equipment you need and wear appropriate protective gear. Alright, that's it. Let's have some fun now and get building. Do you have your copy of the Biosand filter manual? Good. Now let's go through the list of pieces you will need. For actual sizing, please refer to Part A, Cutting the Pieces, in the printed manual. In order to build a Biosand filter mold, you will need the following 11 things. One sheet of steel plate, 3 mm thick. In Imperial units, that's 1 8 of an inch thick. Here's a tip. You will need to make sure that you don't use steel that is thinner than 3 mm as it will bend too easily. If you can't find a sheet that is 3 mm thick, then use 4 mm. Two sheets of steel plate, 6 mm or 1 quarter of an inch thick. Here's a tip. 6 mm steel is best for creating the diffuser ledge and a strong base, especially if you are using a diffuser plate and not a diffuser basin. If 6 mm steel is unavailable, use 5 mm. 1. Angle iron. 
3,210 millimeters or 127 inches in length. One piece of square tubing, 1,435 millimeters or 56 and a half inches in length. Here's a tip. If you don't have square tubing, you can weld together two pieces of angle iron. One bolt of smooth steel rod, 610 millimeters or 24 inches in length. Here's a tip. If you can't find a piece long enough, you can use four bolts that are 152 millimeters or six inches in length. One 25 millimeter or one inch threaded steel rod. Sometimes these are known as all thread or ready rods. It should be 229 millimeters or nine inches in length. You will need two nuts that can be fitted onto this steel rod. You will need a 13 millimeter or half inch threaded rod. This one needs to be 140 millimeters or five and a quarter inches long. You will also need one nut that can be fitted onto this second piece of threaded steel rod. You will need 28 bolts, 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. You will also need a nut for each one of these bolts. Here's a tip. Make sure you take the time to select sheet metal and angle iron that is straight and flat with as little rust as possible. In order to build a biosan filter mold, you will need an arc welder, cutting tools to make your metal pieces, and a grinding tool. You will also need a drill to make holes in the sheet metal. You can use a handheld drill or a drill press. Meet Emmanuel and Montoki. They are constructing a biosan filter mold. We will be watching them work as we go through the instruction booklet together. If you want to follow along, turn to page A1-3 in the Biosan Filter Manual. The first step in building a Biosan Filter Mold is to cut the metal pieces to the appropriate size. First, you will need to cut your 3 mm thick steel plate. You will need to cut it into several pieces. The pieces you will be making are four interior side pieces, one bottom inside piece, one extractor support piece, two exterior side pieces, one exterior front piece, one exterior back piece, two side nose pieces, one front nose piece, and one nose cover plate piece. All these pieces can be cut from a single steel plate if you can find one big enough. This is an example of what that would look like. Make sure that your sheet of steel is flat. It shouldn't have any concave or convex areas. Also, at least one side of the sheet should be free from rust. This is because rust will make concrete stick in the mold, which will make it much harder to make a biosand filter. Once you have cut all the pieces, drill a hole 29 millimeters or 1 and 1 8 inches in diameter in the center of the extractor support piece. Drill a hole that is 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch in diameter in the nose cover plate piece. Make sure you file the edges of the hole so that you can fit a piece of 10 millimeter plastic tubing through. After drilling the holes, you will be cutting the 6 mm thick steel plate. This sheet will be cut into the following pieces. 
four interior side pieces and one base plate piece. If you can't find 6mm or 5mm plate, don't worry. You can also use plate steel that is 3mm thick. Using thinner plate steel will make your diffuser ledge much weaker, so you will need to reinforce your base plate with longer square tubing or angular bar. Once you have all your pieces cut from 6mm plate, the next step is to prepare the angle iron. You will need to cut the angle iron into six pieces. Two pieces should be 940 millimeters or 37 inches long. The next two pieces should be 387 millimeters or 15 and a quarter inches long. And the final two pieces should be 305 millimeters or 12 inches long. you will need to drill holes in the angle iron. Take a look at the manual to see where the holes should go. There are several ways you can do this, depending on the tools you have available. The first option is to drill the holes in the angle iron right now. They should be 11 millimeters or 7 16th of an inch in diameter. You will be drilling the holes in the corresponding metal sheets once the mold has been assembled. This option can sometimes make it hard to line up the holes properly. The second option is to drill pilot holes that are less than 11 millimeters in diameter in both the angle iron and sheet metal. This way you can line up the holes more easily when it comes time to assemble the mold. The third option is to simply mark where you will be drilling the holes and do the drilling once you have the pieces clamped together. You can't use a drill press if you choose the third option you'll need to use a handheld drill instead. After you have decided what you will do with the angle iron, you will be cutting the square tubing. Remember, if you don't have any square tubing, you can weld two pieces of angle iron together. Cut the square tubing into 12 pieces. One piece should be 387 millimeters or 15 and a quarter inches long. Two pieces should be 175 millimeters or 6 and 7 eighths inches long. Four pieces should be 57 millimeters or 2 and a quarter inches long. And five pieces should be 89 millimeters or 3 and a half inches long. Next, drill holes in the square tubing as directed in the manual. Since these holes don't need to be lined up with the other parts of the mold, you can drill them right now. Once you are done with the square tubing, you need to cut the smooth steel rod into four pieces. Each piece should be 152 millimeters or six inches long. <laughs> 